invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed and Pasquale. When Luigi Vasco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> it's a funny thing about American people. They like to put their food in the cans. <laughs> they got a milk in the cans, a beer in the cans, a meat in the cans, fish, beans, everything is in the cans. Mamma mia, is a lucky somebody invented the can opener or American people would starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> but leave it to the American. One of fellas that come along and invent the ten cent the can opener. Then not a fella is an event a can opener that's a hang on a wall and opens up at a can of faster. Now they got electric a can opener. I'm a think if the American is open up at the can any faster, he's gonna have the cover off it before the company is to put the food inside. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Mamma Mia, soon is a come a Christmas. So today I'm a mailing you surprise a package. Of course, this is not just a surprise. It's a something you can use. Right now, I'm going to the post office to mail it. He use it in a good health, Mamma Mia. And I'm a hope it's arrive in a time. All right, who's next? Let's have your parcel. Yes, yeah, sure, all right. Uh, how do you want this sent? COD, special delivery, insured, return receipt, fragile, special handling. I'm going to want to send it to Italy. Uh, what's inside of this parcel? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to tell you. Huh? Well, why not? It's a surprise. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, but you'll have to tell me. That's postal rules. Oh. Didn't you ever send a parcel abroad? Oh, sure. Last the winter, I'm going to send my Uncle Pietro a package. COD? No, BVD was a sports show. <laughs> Well, then you should know the rules. Is there anything fragile inside? Fragile? Yeah, anything breakable. Only if you drop it. Hey, hold it up down there, will you? All right, all right. Say, say, mister, that line is getting a little longer. Let, let's weigh the parcel, huh? All right. Uh, there we are. That's four pounds. It'll cost you $2.10. All right. Here's your money. Now, uh, I'll just stamp this up. All right. Catch us, Joe! Uh, it broke. <laughs> Mama made that a coffee maker is a cost of me twelve dollars. Is that a coffee maker? You got nothing to worry about, Mister. You'll get your money back. The post office is as solid as the rock of Gibraltar. Yeah, I must see the way my coffee maker is a broke kind of the rock. <laughs> Please, you give me back my money now. Well, I don't give you the money. It's it's the government. You'll have to go through some formalities to replace that broken coffee maker. There'll be a little red tape. Tape. I'm going to think even a glue is going to help me. <laughs> now, here we are, Form 1251-J. Here's a pen. Just fill it out, and we'll get you started. All right, but I'm going to hurry. It's almost the time for my night school class. Just don't worry about it. The post office stands behind every parcel. Not always. What? <laughs> if your friend the Joe was stood behind my parcel before, it would have no broke. <laughs> well, here's the form. Yeah. Let's see there. Yes, you fill it out perfectly. Oh, then I'm going to get my $12 back? Uh? No, no. This just entitles you to fill out Form 88C. Quite sure. That's good. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horwitz? Yeah. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? I pass. 
<laughs> Mr. Schultz. No, it's no use to beg. I'm staying out of this pot. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. We're all here. That's right. You've got a full house. You see, I was smart to stay out of that pot. <laughs> <laughs> now, Claude, yeah. I hope you've all studied your spelling, because that's what we're taking up today. Mr. Basco, spell the word rough. 88 to C. 88C? What's that? Oh, there's a form. I'm got to fill out for the post office. You see, Mr. I was... Mr. Basco, not now. Just spell rough. All right. Rough. R-O-U-G-H. That's fine. Mr. Horwitz, spell tough. Tough. T-O-U-G-H. Good. Mr. Olson, slough. Slough. S-L-O-U-G-H. Right. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, enough. That's what I say. <laughs> what? We got enough. Yeah. Mr. Olson, will you spell that word? I'd be glad, too. Enough. E-N-O-U-E-H. Fine. That's very good. What's so very good about it? He can spell it only one way. I can spell it 15 different ways. <laughs> well, Mr. Schultz, I wish you'd be more like Mr. Olson with one answer, but always the correct answer. Thank you, Miss Falling. I always try to be perfect in school. To me, education is like a lighthouse shining in a sea of darkness. I always think the more I learn, the closer I sail to that lighthouse. If I don't study, I get pushed away by the waves. If I study, the waves push me closer. If the waves... Oh, you stop fighting those waves and drown already. <laughs> Funny, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Olson, your efforts are highly commendable. Just keep studying and you'll always go forward. Isn't that right, Mr. Basco? That's right. When I'm a finisher, there's a form. I'm a forwarded it to the claims office. <laughs> what? Miss Spaulding, the post office is a broker. My mom is a coffee maker. And now I'm worried I'm, I'm not going to get the back of my money. Luigi, you got nothing to worry about. Yo, we got the best post office in the whole world. Then why they don't give me back the money? Why they making me fill out all of these forms? Well, Mr. Basco, in government matters, you must expect a certain amount of paperwork. Paperwork? I know a veteran. He wanted to get a house on FHA. But they gave it to him so many forms to fill out, he almost went crazy. So he stopped. <laughs> but Schultz, uh, this a veteran, uh, he's uh, got a house. Uh, oh, sure. He put it together, all the forms, and now he's living in it. Smile, <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. I'm just trying to cheer you up. At least with all these forms, this year you're going to have a white Christmas. <laughs> Sure, there is no help to Luigi. He would like his mother to get the present by Christmas. That's right, Schultz. And if I'm asking the post office to hurry up, you think they're going to make a trouble for me? Ach, smile, Luigi. What, what can they do it to you? Can the post office stop delivering your mail? Can they make you pay four cents for a three-cent stamp? Couldn't they send the special delivery boys to wake you up at three o'clock every morning? Schultz, can they? Why not? The government loves a little excitement. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, Luigi, the special deliveries are just to come for you. They look very important. Outside, it's a say it's from the United States Post Office. Oh, Mamma mia, Pasquale, I'm in a terrible trouble. Luigi, don't tell me you ain't got over that habit of mailing the letters in the fireboxes. <laughs> no, Pasquale, it... First a few months of you was in America, every time you mailed a letter to your mama was a three-alarm fire. <laughs> Mother Pasquale, it's not that. It's a long story. You see, I was asking the government for money. Oh, Luigi, always you making a stupid mistake. So don't you know you can't get the money from the government until you're 65 years old? <laughs> <laughs> Only time Americans are given money before that time is if you're living in Europe. That's called the Morris plan. <laughs> But, Pasquale, you don't understand. That the money I was asked was for the coffee maker. The post office is a broke. Oh, I'm afraid to open up that letter. Pasquale, please, you open them up? I did. <laughs> oh, then we better take out the letter, huh? I did that, too. Oh, you did? What's it say inside it, Pasquale? Luigi, how dare you incinerate I'm going to read other people's mail. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pasquale. There's nothing important inside, anyway. 
Unless are you anxious to stay in this country. Pasquale, give me that letter. Dear Mr. Basco, this will acknowledge you for me to to see. Before we can act any further on your claim, please fill out any return and close the form of 726B. <laughs> Mamma mia, it's not a form to fill. <laughs> That's the matter, little banana nose. Why are you so excited about it? Mother Pasquale, I was sending my mum and me a coffee maker for Christmas. And when the post office is broke it, the fellow is advising me to fill out the summer forms. And when I ask my night school class if I'm going to get into trouble, Schultz is to say yes. Horowitz is to say no. And Mr. Spalding is to say, fill them out. Sure, sure. Luigi, why are you always running around asking advice from people with a big, stupid heads like a hippopotamuses? When all the time you could have come straight to Pasquale, whose brain is light and fast like a bird. <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. You got a real bird brain. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Luigi, let me tell you about these forms. When alien fella like you begins making a trouble for the government, that's no good. Huh? Just imagine, President Truman has got five minutes to rest. He should sit down quiet and play his piano. In as a come a secretary of the treasury, he says, Luigi Bosco wants a new coffee pot. <laughs> Mamma mia, Pasquale, you've you got to help me. Sure, little cabbage puss. <laughs> you know the way Pasquale's always ready to help, Luigi. Uh -huh. You know you could have been trapped and no way to turn, but you come to Pasquale, there's always a one avenue of escape. <laughs> My daughter Rosa. <laughs> Pasquale, Hudson Avenue is a dead end. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to argue with you. This time I'm going to let you suffer the consequences. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep filling out the forms, bothering the government. One day you're going to hear a knock on the door. You're going to run away. Then what's going to happen? Your pictures are going to be on all the post office walls. Is it going to say, Wanted. Luigi Basco, the Corey Coffee Pot, the crook. <laughs> Reward, $500 a dead, $1,000 alive, $750 half a dead. <laughs> no, no, Pasquale. Yes, yes, Luigi, that's only the start. Finally, one day they catch you, shove you on a boat. You're going to sail all over the world, place to place, but no country is letting you in. Mamma mia. From then on, you're going to be known as Luigi Bosco, the man without a coffee pot. <laughs> Life with Luigi continues in just a moment. But first, who says you need one of those newfangled uranium-finding gadgets to strike riches? All you need is a radio set tuned to CBS on Wednesday nights. The drama of Dr. Christian, the hilarious wit of Groucho Marx, the songs and humor of Bing Crosby, and comedy of George Burns and Gracie Allen. You hit pay dirt four times without a stop on most of these same CBS stations. <laughs> And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, maybe you like it to drink a tea? <laughs> Tea's are very delicious. It makes you feel nice and warm inside. And it's very healthy. Besides, I'm still not able to get the money for the coffee pot. I'm going to explain to you what happened. After I'm going to fill out the first three forms, I'm going to find out that this is an entitlement me to three more. <laughs> so I'm going to fill out the forms 1148G72F1249L. And finally this morning... I'm going to receive a letter from the post office, which is to say, your coffee pot is now officially a broke. <laughs> <laughs> this summer could have told him a minute I was a seat of pieces on the floor. <laughs> but the worst thing of all, Mamma Mia, I'm afraid that you're not going to get your present in the time of for Christmas. Best I'm going to hope for is I'm going to shouldn't get in trouble with the government. Luigi! 
Luigi, my fellow booby. <laughs> Hello, Schultz. Ach, you look so sad. Like a police dog that looked in the mirror and finds out he's really a cocker spaniel. <laughs> oh, Schultz, Schultz, I- I'm all mixed up, huh? Maybe it would have been about if I was to send my mama the money instead of the coffee pot. <laughs> now, Luigi, what is done is done. <laughs> if everybody went around crying over spilled milk, the world would be filled with hysterical cows. <laughs> <laughs> now, cheer up. Things ain't never so bad like they look. But, Schultz, uh, Pasquale is to uh, say because I'm alien, uh, who's about uh, the government, uh, President Truman is uh, not going to play the piano. <laughs> So because he cannot play the piano, he's going to send me on a boat all over the world until they hang me up in a post office. <laughs> oh, that steaming Pasquale, has he got you for shimmered? <laughs> L- Luigi, if, if, if you are so worried, forget all about the forms. So this is America. You could do whatever you want. Well, you could go downtown right now and see the postmaster. The postmaster? Sure. Like the sweet cream in a bottle of milk, you've got to go right to the top. <laughs> Schultz, if I'm going to see the postmaster, you don't think I'm going to make a bigger trouble? Of course not. Now, go on. Right ahead. Go on. Now. All right. All right, Schultz. I'm going to go right to now. Sure. Or maybe your mama's going to get a present in time for Christmas after all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Schultz. But, but, smile, Luigi. Be like me. Happy. Always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Mamma mia. Oh, what a big post office building. Must there be a whole block long. Well, I guess they needed to keep all of those forms. What's, uh, what's uh, this uh, printing under the building? Belt in the year MCMXLV. Must have been secret of code so far in the country they shouldn't know how old is the post office. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm doing the right thing. I'm going. <laughs> Mamma mia, everybody is so busy here. Maybe I should go home. Ooh. It is a man coming with a uniform and a gun. Yes? Can I help you? No, 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 no. He's all right. I'm going, I'm going. I notice you've been wandering around. What are you looking for? Please, where do you keep the postmaster? <laughs> oh, the postmaster. Room 109. Just follow your nose. Huh? I said just follow your nose. Where is she going? <laughs> Look, mister, there's room 109 toward the end of the hall. All right. Uh, thank you very much. 101, 103, 105, gentlemen. <laughs> One, 107, 109. Ah, here, here. Office of the postmaster. I'm a he's a nice fellow. I guess maybe he's busy making the stamps for today. Yes? Come right in, sir. Oh, thank you. Are you the postmaster's daughter? <laughs> no, I'm his man Friday. <laughs> you must have been joking. Why? You're not a man and today is a Tuesday. <laughs> what did you wish to see the postmaster about, sir? I'm a son of a lot of forms, so he's a know me already. Just to tell him of the fellow with the broken a coffee pot. Uh, if you have a claim, sir, the postmaster's a very busy man. Why don't you go back to the post office where it happened and fill out form 1251J? Please, Mr. Thursday. <laughs> I'm a filled out the form of 1251J88 to C726. So did you fill them out in duplicate? No, in the back of my store. <laughs> Also, I'm going to fill out the form of 978 to G, 1123F for 62H. 62H? That's a fishing and hunting license. I'm going to fill that out, too. 
Well, now, please, are you letting me talk with the postmaster? I wanted my mama me sure to get her the coffee pot to buy Christmas. Well, this is highly irregular, but... Well, come on. All right, thank you. Mr. Williams, somebody to see you. Miss Brown, I'm very busy. He's quite insistent. Well, all right. Uh, uh, hello. Well, let's go down to business. Have a seat. I'm going to want a seat. I'm going to want a coffee pot. <laughs> what? Please. A few days ago, I'm going to want to send a coffee pot to my mama me in Italy. Post office clerk is a take it. He's a throw it up in the air and he's a say, here a Joe, catch. <laughs> What's your trouble? Joe is a no catch. <laughs> I see. The coffee pot broke. And you'd like your money back. Yes, it's a cost of $12. Hey, you want to pay me back an hour? I'll be glad to. Oh, thank you. You fine man. Just fill out form 1251J. Oh, no. No, please, Mr. Post. I'm going to fill out a dozen of forms. Well, in that case, Mr. Basco, I suggest you go home and wait. In due time, our claims department will get around to you, settle your case, and you will receive financial reimbursement. I'm going to want the financial embarrassment. I'm going to want the money. I meant money, Mr. Basco. Now, if you'll excuse me. Please, please. I'm going to know you're a busy man, but I'm afraid that by the time I'm going to get to the new coffee pot, is it going to be past the Christmas? Mr. Basco, that can't be helped. Accidents will happen, and when the department is at fault, we make good on all claims. Now, you'll just have to be patient and wait until we contact you. But please, I'm going to pay the $12 for the coffee pot. You pay me eleven dollars an hour, and I'm gonna forget the whole thing. <laughs> Mr. Basco, the post office department doesn't operate that way. We're a huge organization. Do you know how many pieces of mail we handle in one day right here in Chicago? No. Millions. Do you know what that means? Yeah, you got a good business. <laughs> it's a big business, Mr. Basco. Now, if I had to take time out every day to explain these things to all our patrons. I would have no time left to attend to my regular duties. Now, please, show some cooperation. But, but, but Mr. Post, I'm, I'm always trying to cooperate with the post office. Signs all over, they say, before Christmas, mail early. For the past three weeks, every time I'm going to send a letter to my mom, I'm going to mail it to four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm... When I'm going to use one of your pens in the post office, I'm always write the very small. So I shouldn't use it too much ink. <laughs> and every time I'm going to put a stamp on a letter, I'm always going to take off for my hat before I'm going to lick George Washington. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I have no doubt that you're a good citizen, but we do have our rules, and I can't help you. Now, if you'll excuse me... Please, please... I take a ten dollars for the coffee pot. <laughs> Will you try to understand me? Nine dollars. I told you I can't do a thing. My hands are tied. For a man, it must be harder to write it that way. <laughs> Good day, sir. <laughs> What's the matter for you? Look at you. Hair all mussed up, eyes are bloodshot, face all the wet and perspired. You look like you was taking a nap at the bottom of Lake Michigan. <laughs> well, please, please don't make a fun. I was around all the way from the post office. Post masters got very mad at me, and I think I'm going to be in a real trouble. Serves you right because you didn't listen to me. When you got trouble with the post office, you've got to go through the regular channels to fill out the forms in a good English. That's what they call the English channels. <laughs> well, you didn't. No. You was rude to the postmaster, wasn't you? I'm a didn't wanna. Didn't wanna doesn't mean it wasn't a doer. <laughs> but being a rude to the post office, you've got to suffer the worst of punishment that any alien can get in this country. Is it called the RFD? RFD? What's that? Rude the foreigners are deported. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Luigi, there's a darker days ahead for you. Is a one a time when you can use a good citizen out of your side. Luigi, I'm a big man of downtown. Just to mention the name Pasquale, I'm going to carry a lot of weight. And if you marry my daughter, Rosie, you know what that's a mean? Huh? 
I say, if you marry my daughter, Rosie, you know what that's made. Menza, I'm not going to carry a lot of weight. <laughs> ah, Luigi, you got no choice. You were drowning a man. You've got to grab the straw. But Squally, Rosie's in no straw. She's a whole haystack. <laughs> All right, all right, that's a settle it. I'm a wash my hands off of your face. So goodbye. No, wait, wait, Pasquale. I'm a give up. That's what I like, a fighter. <laughs> I gotta call it a blush of the bride. Rosa! 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 Call me, call me. <laughs> Yes, my little honey bunch. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, Luigi's just to ask him my permission to walk down the aisle with you. What do you say? Okay with me, Luigi. What picture's playing? Oh, shut up. <laughs> Now, look, my children, cuddle up closer together. And we... uh, pardon me, is Mr. Basco here? I'm I a... was sent here by the post office. Well, I, 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 I'm going to tell him when he's to come back. Luigi, don't be so frightened. This here is Mr. Basco. What can I do for you, mister? Oh, uh, Mr. Basco, I have good news for you. The postmaster has taken a personal interest in your damaged parcel claim, and he's going to see to it that the matter is expedited immediately. Please, I'm a just the one of the money. Well, I'm here to see that you get your $12. The postmaster has signed a voucher releasing those funds from the United States Treasury. Oh, thank you. I'm from the Treasury Department. Uh, now, if you'll just go through a little formality and uh, fill out Form 183-D, which entitles you to fill out Form 789-A. Come on, man, back to the forms again. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, I'm a finally got the back of my twelve dollars. Now I'm a sending you something else. It's not a coffee pot. It's a very handy kind of be used for a lot of things. And it's a guarantee that not to break. It's a twelve dollars a cash. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a son of Luigi Basco, little immigrant. Be sure to listen next Tuesday at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama, Basco, describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olson. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. They'll be riding the range at a hard and hilarious gallop on Bing Crosby's Wednesday night CBS show tomorrow night. William Boyd, alias Hopalong Cassidy, will be Bing's guest. And he'll team up with Sagalong Crosby in a rootin' tootin' western sketch. Remember, the Bing Crosby show is heard every Wednesday night on most of these same CBS stations. And now stay tuned for Escape, which follows immediately on most of these same stations. This is CBS, where you live life with Luigi on Tuesday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.